You're watching live pictures of the funeral service for B.B. King, a service of worship taking place at the Bell Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Indianola, Mississippi. We are Mississippi Public Broadcasting, bringing you the funeral live. In the night. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish those the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believed in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. I would not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not of the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
You're watching live the Riley B.B. King funeral taking place in Indianola, Mississippi at Bill Grove Missionary Map Baptist Church in Indianola, Indianola, Mississippi. You're looking at live pictures inside of the sanctuary on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Thank you. 
that side at this time, we have to stop. And I'll see you attached to the sheriff. The library will not allow us to bring more in. And we must proceed with the ceremony. For those that are outside in the foyer, there's an overflow in the fellowship hall. You can go to the fellowship hall overflow for those that are in the foyer. Those that are in the foyer, follow the interior halls on the south and north side to the fellowship hall. Follow the outside halls.
a service of worship, giving, God, giving glory to God for the life of Riley B. King. September 16, 1925, May 14, 2015. God is our refuge and strength and very present help in trouble. Psalms 46 and 1. Saturday, May 30th, 2015, 11 o'clock a.m., to 3 o'clock p.m., Bell Grove Missionary Baptist Church, 1301 B.B. King Road, Indianola, Mississippi. Good morning to each of you. At this time, we are asking that all cell phones Please be placed on silent or turn them off. As all of us know, Mr. King had so many great and loyal friends and fans. We know many of you would love to appear on the program, but we all are aware that that is impossible. However, we will follow the printed program with no deviation. I need to add the names, if you would be so kind to look with me on the program where you see five selected items. There are four that will speak. And they are Attorney Carver Randall Sr., Mr. Marion Johnson, Mr. Christopher Clouser and Mr. Charles Sawyer. Also, when Senator Willie Simmons and Representative Sarah Thomas come forward, I would like for Mayor Rosenthal to come to the podium along with them. I was informed that water will be available in the fellowship hall if you need some, and it was donated by the Red Cross. We are ready to get started. Again, make sure your phones are on silent or they are turned off, and the program will proceed as printed. Thank you. Also, program participants, when it's your time to come to the podium, I will not continue to reappear. Just come. When your name is listed, please come to the podium.
Please note for our scripture reading, Old Testament, Psalms 121. Trust that in these words, family and all who are gathered here may find comfort. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May God bless the hearers and this the reading of his word. Our New Testament scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with the 51st verse. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, God bless his holy and righteous word. As the musician plays softly, let us prepare our hearts for prayer. Eternal God, our Father, Thou who rules and super rules our world, before the foundations of the world were laid, You called from the blackest of midnights, and You allowed the worlds to twirl. You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. And it is at this appointed time you've allowed us to enter this house of prayer to celebrate the life of a king. But we who are believers we realize that even though we are celebrating the life of a king, we understand that the king has gone to see the king. You are the king of the world. You are the king of glory. And you have given us across these number of years the life of Mr. Riley B.B. King. And before we ask you for anything, we are paused at this time, and we just want to say thank you, sir. Thank you for his life. Thank you, God, for his gifts, his talents that you've allowed him to go across your world, and spread some love and joy. Thank you for the little children, lives he's influenced. Thank you for his talents. Thank you, God, for this family. We thank you for his management team. 
We thank you, O oh God, for all of those who are here under the sound of my voice and those who across this world who have been influenced and touched by his talents and gifts. We thank you, God, and we understand that you are worthy to be praised. And so while the lights are on and the cameras are rolling, let us understand in our hearts that this is worship. For we come to worship you, O oh God, for who you are. And we praise you for what you've done in our lives. We worship you in this place because all life comes from you. And you have given us something great. And we thank you for what you've done. We ask your blessings upon this family, upon those whose lives are changed by him. We ask your blessings also upon his management team. And we, even when they are not able to hear his voice anymore, we understand that all of our gifts and talents combined together, the memories that we have of Mr. King will forever be placed in our hearts. We thank you. We give you all honor and praise. In Jesus' mighty name do we pray. And every believer of God say amen with me.
You're watching live B.B. King's funeral at Bell Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Indianola, Mississippi. Brought to you by Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Good midday to all of you. Good midday to all of you. <laughs> Protocol having been established, but I must say at least uh, to our governor and our congressman, but most of all to each of you in this very illustrious family of Mr. King. I am proud to be able to pay this tribute to our king today. I can think of 
not many people who would be more deserving of a tribute from all of us. B.B. King was a young boy who became a man at the age of nine years old when his mother passed. A few years later, of course, his grandmother passed. And he was preoccupied all of his young life with trying to survive. And I think he gave us a very illustrious example to pattern our lives after. He was told by his mother on her dying bed, Riley, you are a good boy. Do good to other people. Help as many people as you can. And he lived by that simple but very profound advice from his mother. B.B. did not have the luxury of going fishing and going to baseball games and uh, doing a lot of other things, going to Friday night proms and participating in sports events because he was preoccupied with making a living. He lived from place to place, pillow to post, as they say. I hate he could not have been in a situation where he could have asserted his athletic talents. Anybody who can ride a bicycle from Lexington to kill Michael, <laughs> in my opinion, would make an outstanding athlete. B.B.'s love for music and his desire to be one of the greatest blues guitarists that the world has ever known propelled him from Johnson Baird Plantation outside of Indianola to Memphis, Tennessee and WDIA to the world where he reached the top and being famous as a musician. In spite of his fame, ladies and gentlemen, this, this young man worked at his craft tirelessly, although he was very outstanding by anybody's standard. He still maintained the common touch. Apparently, he kept in mind what his mother had said to him on her deathbed because he kept asking, what else can I give to my community? He gave of himself. He gave to the children here in our community by helping to support various activities, Little League baseball and other things, scholarships, and giving to various projects that supported our kids here in this community. And he gave to us his music that will last in our hearts and minds for a long, long time, if not forever. One of the most outstanding things he did, and this is a little known fact, B.B. was the catalyst that began the serious effort here in Indianola to bridge the social gap between the races by coming to a party, a lawn party, where there were so many black couples and so many white couples were invited. And he was the center of attraction. But his effort was to bring people together because he loved a harmonious relationship, particularly among the races. And one of his greatest achievements is to say to a group of people here in Indianola one day, I will give my name and my support to the founding of a museum. And ladies and gentlemen, with that consent and with that support, 
the B.B. King Museum here in Indianola was founded. We will enjoy and benefit from this museum the rest of our lives and hopefully the rest of our children and our children's lives. B.B. lived in Las Vegas, but if there's any truth to the saying, home is where the heart is, Indianola was home. No matter where B.B. traveled, he claimed Indianola as his home. There was a tremendous outpouring of love and support for this man when the motorcade came down Highway 61 a couple of days ago from Memphis on 61 to Leland, from 82 to Indianola. There were people everywhere showing and demonstrating their love and respect for this wonderful American. B.B. was my friend. And I can rest so easily now, although he, he lived in Las Vegas, this is the place. And I can rest easy because I know the king is home. Thank you. Right before the next program participant comes to the podium, I am still hearing telephone. Would you please silence or turn off your cell phone? Thank you. Good afternoon. It is so nice to see so many of you with whom I've traveled and worked over these past 10 years. It's very nice to see you. There's an old saying, believe only half of what you see and none of what you hear. With all that's occurred over the last few weeks, I would amend that in this manner. Believe none of what you read and of what you've read and even less of what you hear. I'm Myron Johnson. It was my pleasure to serve as Mr. B's tour manager and as his personal assistant for the last 10 plus years until the time of his passing. It is with great pride that I can say during those 10 plus years, not one bitter, angry, unkind, nor uncaring word was ever spoken between us. I nursed this man through many days, nights, and weeks of sickness, times of stress, worry, and yes, good times. We would sit and talk for what seemed like hours as he would let the words of wisdom and advice flow. He was the first person I told when I found out I was going to be a father, not my mother nor other family members. I turned to Mr. B, and he let loose one of the biggest grins I've ever seen. Then I called my mother. <laughs> you see, we shared a closeness that not most could understand. I shall remember him as a very even-tempered man, slow to anger, mild-mannered, a true friend. It's unlikely I shall ever find another like Mr. B. Now, some of you may be wondering, what's with this Mr. B stuff? Well, when I first started working with him, I asked how, should, how I should address him. And he said he didn't, he didn't care, it didn't matter, as long as I didn't call him Pops. <laughs> I never called him Pops. I called him, uh, I couldn't call him BB because it didn't seem to offer up the degree of respect I felt due this person. I knew Mr. would be the first and foremost because he deserved it. Over the past 60 plus years of accomplishments, he earned it. So, Mr. B, it was. 
Through the years, many people have inquired, what's it like to work for the legend that is B.B. King? What's your favorite place you've been? What's the best time you've had on the road with B.B. King? Most recently, are you all right? How are you feeling? Well, it's not at all difficult to answer those questions. It's been an all day, every day, non-ending, 10-year blast. Favorite place and best of times would be over our favorite Golden Spoon frozen yogurt store on Eastern Avenue at home in Las Vegas. Just the two of us, him, unrecognized, sitting on the patio eating our favorite flavors, enjoying the summer breezes, telling jokes, sharing stories, and yes, watching women. <laughs> what a time we had. It meant the world to me. The night before he left us, I was with him in his bedroom. I had just finished feeding him, and I touched his shoulder and said, Mr. B, I'm heading home to get some rest. He stopped me, reached over and took my hand, gently squeezed it, pulled it to his mouth, looked me in the eyes, and kissed my hand. I went home that night not knowing that I would ever get to look into the eyes of this person again. He's gone now, but he's left me a part of himself that he didn't share with anyone else, and I will cherish those memories always. I was sitting beside him, holding his hand, when he took his last breath. My heart is heavy. This man who I loved will be with me, with us, always. In a phrase, he had a big heart and a kind soul. If I had to sum it up how, I feel, how I'm feeling in one word, that word would be rejoicing. Rejo rejoicing in the fact that he's not stressing anymore. No pain, no hurt, no worries. He's finally found in death what he never could in life, peace. Thank you, Myron. My name is Christopher Clouser, and today love has truly come to town, to Las Vegas, to Memphis, and now home here in Indianola, Mississippi. I dare say no one wants to be here today, especially BB, but we are. So be it. Governor, Senator, Congressman, Mayor, children, brother, sister, cousins, nephews. Thank you for sharing this wonderful, wonderful gentle man with all of us. Like you, B.B. King is a, uh, just like how you feel, B.B. King is a dear friend, my hero. Again, just like he is to each and every one of you here today to honor him. For the past 28 years of my life, it seemed our hero got better and better younger and ever so humble and loving. What we all would do for five more minutes with B.B. King. Isn't it truly wonderful when your true hero is such a complete and wonderful person, a celebrated world mu musician, but such a gentle person, so loving, so caring, and kind and generous. The person is interested in you even more than he's interested in himself. It's that Riley B. King we've all come to know. My brief tribute today is because of B.B.'s instructions and a specific request. 28 months ago, B.B. called and said we need to get together. He said, uh, meet me on the bus as soon as you can. I thought to myself, I hadn't taken a sauna bath in a while, so I think I'll go do that. <laughs> a few days later, I showed up. 
and always came early to check on the boys in the band and have a wonderful, entertaining chat with Norman Matthews, another wonderful man. Among the things Norman said to me is, it's approaching the back of the bus, he said, Chris, you know, BB doesn't do funerals. Um, we could go to them all the time at our ages. We did, however, go to one just recently. About an hour into the funeral, BB leaned over to me, being Norman, and said, if this fellow doesn't stop talking soon, another person's gonna pass away. <laughs> I'm keeping that in mind today, I promise. As I headed to the back of the bus, a young boy, age nine, came out holding an autograph picture, but he turned around and went back in, and he said, Mr. King, you, you, you autographed this for me. It says, B.B. King, could you please write King of the Blues? He says, no, I don't do that. That's what people talk to me. That's how people refer to me. I'm not the King of the Blues. That's what they say I am. So, young son, I'm sorry, I will not autograph it. That's the humility of B.B. King. So B.B. said, sit, let's talk. At the time, two years plus ago, I was hurting a bit. I'd lost my younger sister, and B.B. knew her, and, and uh, knew that she taught 30 years in public schools in St. Louis, Missouri, and he helped me a lot. That's all I can say, and that's not about today. What is about today is what he next talked to me about. He said, someday, maybe in the middle of a show or maybe sometime else, I will leave this wonderful world and I need you to do a couple things. I said, B.B., what if I go first? He says, don't worry about that, I'll work it out. <laughs> he said, you'll need a paper and pencil. I said, okay. Tell my family, my children, my brother, and my sisters, my nieces and my nephews that I dearly love them. From the bottom of my heart, I am, they are truly my sunshine. Thank my band, Boogaloo, and all those musicians that went on the road and in front, of, in front of all the people that celebrated us and our dear friends around the world. These, fee, these fellows are the kings of the blues. To all my helpers that got me from here to there every day, to the agents, record people, drivers, cooks, helpers, thank you and I love you. Chris, please mention two special people Laverne Tony, who for 39 years has put up with the good, the not so good, the challenge, but she is my dear friend and I cherish her. To Tina France, my friend, my helper, my supporter for 35 years. And don't forget Barbara and Norma. Loyal and unselfish, desperately needed these four caretakers to do what I do. I love you and I thank you. To my fans and friends that took me from Indianola, my home, and to Memphis and to places beyond my dreams, people like Eric and Bonnie, Buddy, Bobby, Buddy, Kevin, Bono, Tommy, hundreds of musicians, friends, supporters that took my name around the world, put me on stages, put me in recordings, too many to mention. You have no idea how much that has meant to me and how uncomfortable I was when I was driving, when I was riding in the back of the car that Eric was driving. <laughs> he said, mention Lucille and my museum, who are and will always be alive and very well. Maybe they will, maybe, maybe at this point, the people in the audience will clap just a few times. <laughs> Finally, Chris, say something important, something important enough that those kind enough to attend the service would remember. I said, like what? He said, just figure it out. I said, yes, sir. I found a wonderful, very brief poem written by the Regis Professor of Divinity at Oxford in 1914. It's called Death is Nothing at All is nothing at all. I've only slipped, slipped away into the next room. I am I, and you are you. Whatever we were to each other, that we are still. Call me by my old familiar name, 
speak to me in the easy way you always used to. Put no difference into your tone, wear no forced air of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed. Play, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without effort, without the ghost of a shadow in it. Life means that all that it ever meant, it is the same as it ever was. There's absolute, unbroken continuity. What is death but a negligible accident? Why should I be out of mind because I am out of sight? I am waiting for you for an interval. Somewhere very near, just around the corner. All is well, nothing is past, nothing is lost. One brief moment, and all will be as it was before. How we, how we laugh at the trouble of parting when we all meet again. We love you, Mr. King, and we all look forward to being with you once again. Am I heard? Good afternoon. If you have trouble hearing, do this. All right? Speak up. Speak up. All right. My voice is soft and doesn't carry so well. My name is Charlie Sawyer, and I wrote a book called The Arrival of B.B. King. And I'm privileged to be part of today's event, which you might call the return of B.B. King or the departure of B.B. King. I have some historical remarks, brief remarks, history being my specialty and not trusting to improvise. So here we go. Riley B. King's almost 90-year life began at a time when men and mules worked from kin to kaint, when armies of men, women, and children crept across the fields of Jim Crow, Mississippi, dragging 11-foot cotton sacks filling them with cotton bowls picked by hand, one by one. It has ended at a time when giant machines controlled from computerized cabs spanning five or six rows of cotton move across the vast delta fields at a steady clip. I'll try. <laughs> Can we turn it up? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> From Jim Crow and Ken DeCaint to GPS, Google, and an African-American in the White House, that is the span of his life, the journey our culture has taken during Riley King's time on Earth. Better? Okay. Shall I continue? Okay. The museum built in his name here in Indianola has described his personal journey this way, from Indianola to icon. Riley King, as B.B. King, became an icon of American music by founding a new style of electric guitar playing. Indeed, a whole new genre of music on that instrument. Audiences and guitarists worldwide were dazzled by his performance. It's not hyperbole to say that his influence on electric blues guitar is so deep and so profound that his musical DNA, his imprint, can be heard in the playing of every guitarist today who plays the blues. B.B. King lives in every blues lick on every electric guitar for as long as blues is played on six strings. But how did he do this? How did he achieve this remarkable success? How did he earn the respect of every guitarist on the planet, the adoration of millions of fans worldwide, and the undisputed title, King of the Blues? He did it not just by his musical genius, but he did it by extraordinary endurance, by unwavering determination, by playing an estimated 18,000 performances. His career was a lifelong crusade to make blues respectable, 
to rescue it from an image of a man wearing overalls, carrying a diddly bow in one hand and a jug in the other. He wanted to elevate the blues to a new status where it would be accepted as an American music genre equal to jazz, soul, and rock and roll. The measure of his accomplishment is best seen by looking at two times in his life. The first is the spring and summer of 1940, when at age 14 he was an orphan living alone in a cabin in Kilmichael, Mississippi, sharecropping one acre of cotton and living on a furnish of $2.50 a month. Contrast this with an evening in December 2006 when he received the Medal of Freedom given to him by President George W. Bush at a White House ceremony. He went from a 14-year-old solitary sharecropper to a recipient of the highest civilian honor. In the distant future, many generations hence, when the history of the 20th century will reside only in books and other artifacts, people will hear blues music and recognize it as a distinct art form, different from jazz, different from rock and roll, different from soul music. And in those distant times, blues music will be performed and loved, just as 18th and 19th century classical music is performed and loved today. And it is B.B. King, who has won for blues this place in our culture. He, more than anyone, is responsible for securing a permanent place for blues in our very cultural imprint. His unique story gave the listening public a persona to identify with the music. His story became the story of the blues. B.B. King has earned a place alongside Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, Charlie Parker, and Miles Davis in the pantheon of artists who made the 20th century's new style of improvisational music America's unique contribution to world culture. Now, if I may just add a personal memory, one of my sweetest and strongest memories, which came from one of our regular visits not many years ago with B.B. on his bus with my wife Sherry and my son Sam. Sherry talked to Sam about his guitar playing, and he said, Sam, young players tend to grab the neck of the guitar like they're trying to strangle it. Don't strangle it. Cradle it. Hold it in your arm. Hold it in your hand. He said, my fingers don't have calluses. Look. And he put his hand out to me. And I took his hand. And I put my fingertips on his fingertips. And they were soft and supple. And I thought in that moment, I'm touching the fingers that made 60 years of great music. And I'll remember this day as long as I live. And that was his gift, the capacity to create intimacy under any circumstances. Thank you. I'm working on a building. I'm lifting up the cross name. 
Phoebe would understand. Uh, to the many ministers of the gospel, to uh, all of you who are assembled, to uh, this family of this great ambassador of the world, there's no real tribute you can say about a man who's done so much. But I think uh, the two letters that I need to share with you says it all. Uh, to come from Itabina, Indianola, Mississippi, and go around the world and still keep that common touch, as Carver Randall talked about, says it all. My first letter says the blues has lost its king and America has lost the legend. B.B. King was born a sharecropper's son in Mississippi, came of age in Memphis, Tennessee, and became the ambassador who brought his all-American music to his country and the world. No one worked harder than B.B. No one inspired more up-and-coming artists. No one did more to spread the gospel of the blues. Three years ago, Michelle and I hosted a blues concert at the White House. I had expected that I'd be talked into singing a few lines of Sweet Home Chicago with B.B. by the end of the night, but that was the kind of effect his music had and still does. He gets stuck in your head. He gets you moving. He gets you doing the things you probably shouldn't do, but will always be glad you did. B.B. may be gone, but that thrill will be with us forever. And there's going to be one killer blues session in heaven tonight. <laughs> Barack Obama. I'm sorry I can't be with you today to honor the remarkable life and immeasurable contributions of B.B. King. The blues is one of our country's great gifts to the world, a gift B.B. King gave better and longer than anyone else. From his early career in Memphis to his decades on the road playing between two and 300 shows a year, B.B. became one of the most enduring and important musical artists of his time. Like so many others, I've been a lifelong fan starting when I was a young boy in Arkansas listening to the three o'clock blues and I was so excited to present his Kennedy Center honor in 1995. Even better, I got to play on stage with him twice, once in the early 1980s in Memphis and then at a California charity event in 2001. I was his backup sax man. <laughs> there will never be another B.B. King, but his legend and legacy will live on through the music he leaves behind, the generations of musicians he influenced, and the simple human kindness and bright-eyed smile he shared with all of us. My thoughts and prayers are with you. Bill Clinton. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Congressman has just shared letters from two presidents of the United States. As governor of this great state, we often try to recognize and honor the Delta's favorite son, B.B. King. There were proclamations recognizing B.B. King Day. We made him Secretary of the Blues. We gave some money for the museum. We would do anything that B.B. King wanted because we felt as if we could never do enough to thank him for his contributions. He always believed we were doing too
too much. Governor, I don't need that, he would say. I thank you for coming here. I was on the bus last year during the homecoming as we were naming him again ambassador for the great state. Three living governors had signed that, and he was so honored. I came on to the bus. He was there eating a Snickers bar. <laughs> True story, BB, please. You know, you, he said, Governor, I got to have a little energy. You know, I, I got to go out and entertain. I got, this is the homecoming. I got to make sure these are our home folks. I told him, you know, you were born in Burclair, Mississippi, in September 1925. A year later, in October 1926, a little girl came along named Estelle Roberts. That was my mother. Burclair. Yeah, not many people know where Burclair is at. You know, as a child, they'd say, where was your mama born? Burclair. <laughs> where? I said, it's near Moorhead where I was born. You'll find it up there. <laughs> this man walked with presidents, entertained them, met popes, traveled the world as our ambassador, the blues in Mississippi. He lived his life just as he would want and just as we would have wanted him to. You see, he started his life as so many in the Mississippi Delta, as Reverend Archie Fairther, Church of God in Christ brought his Sears silver tone over to the house and played it for B.B. Riley. The guitar is a precious instrument, he told Riley. It's another way to express God's love. Now, as hard as we might try, of all the things that we could do, congressmen, all the elected officials that are here that time and time again brought him to the Senate and to the House to honor him. Marty Stewart here today as we were talking about the impression that he's had on America's music. Marty said, nobody's music's better than ours. <laughs> building a building. Amen. So we're going to continue to try to honor him every way we can from the state of Mississippi, to the governor's office, to the Senate, to the House, to the United States congressmen, to U.S. senators and presidents. This humble, quiet man changed the world, but the world never changed him. As I was, as I was traveling here today, I was downloading some BB music. <laughs> and as I plugged it into the speaker system there in the vehicle and we turned it up and as I was coming across those fields and looking out into them, I could have just imagined where the blues was born and why. The struggle, the anguish, the desperation, but more importantly, the faith that gave birth to the blues. One song came to mind, The Servant's Prayer, written by B.B. King. O oh Lord, I will serve you. I will serve you every day. All of my life, I will praise you. Hear me now calling, I pray. I would say church, family, Mississippi, Delta, the Lord has certainly heard B.B. King calling. May God always bless his spirit and his eternal soul. Thank you.
this is the Mississippi Legislative Choir. We're going to sing a few B.B. King numbers. <laughs> Representative Thomas, the Senate yields to the House. Protocol has already been established, but good afternoon. Good afternoon. State of Mississippi, a proclamation by the Speaker of the House of Representatives and Representative Sarah Richardson Thomas, mourning the life of B.B. King, the King of the Blues. Whereas in the 1950s, the national fame became synonymous with B.B. King, once his song, Three O'Clock Blues, the number one spot on Billboard's Rhythm and Blues charts, asking his one of the most prominent names in rhythm and blues music. Now, therefore, on behalf of the House of Representatives of the state of Mississippi, we do hereby commend the life, legacy, and musical accomplishments of B.B. King, the King of the Blues, and express deepest sympathy to his family, friends, and loved ones upon his passing. This, the 21st day of May, 2015, Philip Gunn, Speaker of the House, the Mississippi State Representative, Sarah Richardson Thomas. Today, as we rise, we remember a man of distinction, Riley B.B. King, better known as B.B. King, the King of the Blues, who was born into poverty but refused to allow poverty to determine his destiny. He played his guitar on Saturday nights at Club Ebony on Church Street and in the churches on Sunday morning while transforming himself to become King of the Blues, playing Lucille all over the world, a boy with a vision, who ran from his native soil to escape hardship and the daily struggles encountered as he labored in the cotton fields, never forgetting his roots and the place he called home, the Mississippi Delta. A man of distinction, whose life revealed that he was born into poverty in the poorest area of America, the Mississippi Delta, but he died 89 years later as king of the blues, living in prosperity. This man, king of the blues, life from beginning to end demonstrates that he was a man with a purpose and a vision. He was a man of integrity, humble and kind-hearted, with a commitment to the Delta and the state of Mississippi. Our king, our king of the blues, B.B. King Bow reveals that he contributed much to the music industry to include receiving 15 Grammys and receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2006. Our King of the Blues has given so much to Mississippi and the Mississippi Delta through his annual homecoming to Indianola while serving as ambassador to the state of Mississippi. Our King of the Blues, B.B. King, race and life from birth to death can be summed up as stated in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Our King of Blues, who left the Delta to escape poverty, find prosperity on his journey, but chose to return to his native land for the found resting place. So while many could say that the race has been run and I've finished the course, this man, this king, by returning home, will continue to live and do much for the area in which he tried to escape from because of poverty and bring prosperity to it. Now, therefore, the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Mississippi extend condolences on the, off the entire membership of the Mississippi State Senate to the surviving families of the King family, the King of the Blues, B.B. King, 
the thrill will never be gone. Signed by the Lieutenant Governor and all 50 senators who love the King very much. This proclamation will be placed in, or submitted to the museum to be placed there as they see fit. Thank you. The House of Representatives will be given to, the House of Representatives will be given to the Blues Museum, B.B. King's Museum. Good afternoon. It's been an honor for me to be able to have broken bread many a times with B.B. King on his annual trip here in Indianola, to enjoy his humor and see those beautiful smiles as people would walk up to him and give him a hug and see that smile in return on B.B.'s face. I've spent many an evening, two, three, four o'clock in the morning, after B.B. had played all day long at the festival and all night long at Club Ebony, and still had the energy and excitement and enthusiasm to visit with local artists who wanted to get up there and just jam with him 15 minutes. So it's been an honor to be considered a friend of B.B. King. As mayor of Indianola, I'd like to do this proclamation, uh, but this comes from more than just me. It comes from our board of aldermen, as it does the citizens of Indianola. Whereas Riley King, the world famous blues artist, better known and loved as B.B. King, was called to his Lord on May 14th, 2015. Whereas Riley King, throughout his long and productive career, earned numerous national and international professional honors, including among many others, 15 Grammys, the Grammy Hall of Fame Award, the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, and was inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Whereas Riley King was awarded the Presidential Medal of Honor by President George Bush in 2006. Whereas Riley King spent his early life in Indianola and Sunflower County as a tractor driver as he honed the skills that brought him worldwide renown as an artist who proclaimed Indianola as his hometown, thus serving as an ambassador of art and goodwill for Indianola, Sunflower County, and this great state of Mississippi. Whereas Riley King was loved by friends and fans as a gentleman, humanitarian, philanthropist, because of his humility, friendliness, generosity, and for his love of children. Whereas Riley King annually returned to Indianola to perform 34 concerts benefiting these children that live here in Indianola, Mississippi and donate, donated much time and many of his personal belongings to the B.B. King Museum and Delta Interpretive Center, and in doing so, made it a world-class attraction. Whereas Riley King, by virtue of his art, his personality, his charity, his example, and goodwill, worked tirelessly as an agent of profound brotherly love racial reconciliation for the city of Indianola and this great state of Mississippi. Therefore, I, Steve Rosenthal, Mayor of the City of Indianola, do hereby proclaim the day of May 30th, 2015, as a day of remembrance and honor of Riley King for his lifelong service to God, his art, his fellow man, and to the people of the city of Indianola. This will be uh, housed at the Indianola B.B. King Museum. Thank you.
proclamation that I would like to acknowledge it says B. B. King as Mississippi Secretary of State of the Blues and it was signed by James Kemp Poole who is the chairperson of the Mississippi Blues Commission it was also signed by the following William F. Winters who was governor of Mississippi from 1984 through 1988, Ray Mabus, Governor of Mississippi, 1988 through 1992, Ronnie Musgrove, Governor of Mississippi, 2000 through 2004, Governor of Mississippi, Haley Barbara, 2004 through 2012, and our current governor, Phil Bryant, governor of Mississippi, 2012 through 2016. <clears throat> the family of Mr. Riley B. B. King and his management team would like to express sincere appreciation to all of you well wishers and fans around the world who, ha who has shown love and expressed their condolences. Your kindness will forever be remembered. Thank you.
Martha Stewart, I'm here because I love Mr. King. How about a hand for Mr. King? I was thinking about a time I was asked, Bibi called me and asked me to record a song with him in Los Angeles. And his guitar sounded so good that day. And I said, Bibi, what kind of amp are you playing through? He went, I don't know. <laughs> but the idea was his touch. He had a perfect touch. He, he had a divinely ordered touch, a God-given touch that went out and touched our minds and our hearts. And that touch changed our lives. When I was a young musician starting out from Mississippi were my dreams. He was one of the people I looked to because he was our ambassador. He showed me how you go around the world and you treat it with love and you treat it with kindness. And for Mississippi, you have people, you know, we have a deep legacy, a deep musical legacy in which we step from if you're a Mississippi musician. But BB was one of the reasons we have a deep musical legacy. He conducted himself with integrity and with and with dignity out there. When I first started traveling, I was about 14 years old, and there was an old line blues man named Mr. Furry Lewis. He heard me play up in Memphis. He said, boy, you got it. He said, but you got to get your mind right. You're either going to be on the hot side or the white side of the gate. <laughs> he said, if you're going to play the, the country music and the blues, you're going to be on the hot side, and that ain't going to work out too good for you. I thought he was wrong, but it bothered me. And years later, I ran into Pop Staple, and I said, Pop, I said, Mr. Furry Lewis told me one time I had to get my mind right, that I had to either get on the hot side or the white side of the gate if I was going to play anything that had the blues in it, I wasn't going to wind up right. He says, well, and if you come from Mississippi, whether you play gospel music, like the gentleman just played, country music, jazz, rock and roll, it all has a touch of the blues in it. Amen? Amen. That's right. We can't help it. <laughs> Thank God. So Pop said, what did that old man tell you? I said, he said I was going to wind up on the hot side. He says, now wait a minute. He said, don't you know when God looks down on the world and he sees how we treat each other, he gets a bad case of the blues. He said, play your music. Years later, I played over B.B.'s homecoming. I said, let me tell you what Mr. Furry Lewis told me. B.B. said, I already know what he told you. He said, that's a bunch of mess. <laughs> so thanks to Mr. King. I'm here because I love B.B. King, as we all do. As a fellow Mississippian, I'm so proud to stand in his shadow as I walk across the world. God bless B.B. King. give reverence to the almighty God yes. without whom I would not be here today. I am happy to announce that I am unapologetically saved. Yes. And for me, the thrill is not gone. <laughs> to the Reverend Evan Matthews, Reverend Otis Anthony, the Reverend Clifford Wilson, to the governor of this great state, to our state lawmakers, Congressman Thompson, to the beloved family of Mr. B.B. King, and to the many friends and guests who have come to celebrate his home going. Will you join me in welcoming home Indianola's and Mississippi's native son, Mr. B.B. King? Indianola and Mississippi's native son, Mr. B.B. King.
B.B. King's granddaughter, Landra Williams, was quoted recently in our hometown's newspaper as saying, to everyone else, he was a legend. But for us, he was love. I agree with Landra's statement. For those of us here in Indianola and around the world, B.B. King is a legend, an icon, a musical giant, a world-class entertainer. But to those of you seated before me, he's family. And for that reason, we and the world extend our deepest sympathy to you. It is a well-known fact regarding the funeral of Mr. King that he made two special requests. One, that the Reverend Dr. David Matthews, who served as pastor of this church for 64 years, would deliver his eulogy. Their friendship extends back over 70 years on a plantation just a few miles west of here. Dr. David Matthews was called home by the Lord a month before Mr. King's death. And I want to honor his widow, Mrs. Lillian Matthews, his daughter, Denise Matthews, and his grandchildren. certain why I was chosen to deliver this eulogy. But I must conclude it's God's doing. And so I'm up here now. And I'm here now and we will make the best of it. As they say in the funeral home business in Mississippi, if the services today are uplifting and inspiring, tell others. <laughs> if they are not, tell us. <laughs> but now, I'm not in the funeral home business. My boss is on high. And I'd like to say, if things turn out, out all right up here, thank God. And if they don't turn out all right, whisper to heaven and say, Lord, help him. <laughs> the second request was that his funeral be held here at Bell Grove Missionary Baptist Church. And if you desire to visit our fast city, you would take B.B. King Road South and then turn east on Dr. David Matthews Lane and you'll end up at this consecrated place where we gather today. Now, it is clear B.B. King expected preaching at his funeral. After all, he chose a Baptist preacher at a Baptist church on the Baptist predominantly side of town to conduct his funeral. He expected preaching. And that gives me the liberty to preach and to be genuinely and authentically me. Now, those of you who know me know by now I preach as one who has been forgiven by God. Those of you who know me know by now I'm Southern by birth. Those of you who know me know by now I'm young at heart. And somebody help me, I'm good looking by the favor of God. <laughs> My task today is twofold. Number one, I want to pay honor and tribute 
to Mr. B.B. King, affectionately known as B.B. And secondly, I want to preach the gospel of Jesus, the King of Kings. It is amazing. It is absolutely amazing how someone from such lowly and humble beginnings could rise to such noble heights of success. In many ways, we can look at the life of B.B. King and be inspired and be encouraged. Hands that once picked cotton would someday pick guitar strings on a national and international stage. Amazing. that left prints on obscure dusty roads would someday transport him into the presence of governors and presidents and popes and heads of states and dignitary. Amazing. Yeah. A voice that once harmonized in a gospel quartet would later belt out lyrics that would warm the hearts and soothe the souls of millions around the world. Simply amazing. B.B. Yeah. was not the arrogant kind. He recognized his gifts, he recognized his talents, and he used them for the greater good wherever and whenever he could. Over 300 concerts and shows per year. Simply amazing. The Bible emphatically declare, your gift will make room for you. That is to say, your talent, your authentic talent, your authentic gift will open doors for you. Doors opened many years ago on a plantation just west of here. From the plantation to the streets of Indianola, another door opened. From the streets of Indianola to the streets of Memphis, Tennessee, where he gained the title Bill Street Blues Boy, another door opened. On to Las Vegas and on to the national stage and on to the international stage, your gift will make room for you. He was a musical giant. He revolutionized the entertainment industry and his songs struck a chord in the human spirit. How many of us have had moments in our lives when our get up and go has gotten up and gone? When our efforts seem wasted, when our service went unrecognized, and when we could not put in words just how we felt, B.B. said it for us all, the thrill is gone. How many of us have recognized the many blessings God has heaped upon us and enjoyed his benefits? And when we didn't know how to express this inexpressible joy, B.B. King expressed it for us when he said, let the good times roll. His song, Sweet Sixteen, reminded us of youth and innocence. For many children here and abroad, B.B. King put the P in potential. For countless children born in similar circumstances, and I'm one of them, wondering if daybreak will ever come, wondering is there a brighter day ahead, wondering if opportunity will ever come knocking, B.B. proved you can triumph over your circumstances. It's not where you come from, but it's where you're headed in this life. Though his talents brought him before dignitaries, he always had the time to return home to perform a free concert in the park for our children. They were drawn to him simply because he was humble and he was down to earth. He was one of us. His story is our story and our story is his. And so it is fitting that we pay tribute to our native son Mississippi's native son and welcome him home. And the question becomes today, how do we keep B.B. King's legacy alive? First, 
Don't ever forget where you come from. When an opportunity presents itself, think back, go back, give back, and help lift somebody else up. I realize the cameras are on us, but we are in a Baptist church. And, and I'm going to go on and let you know all y'all looking pretty so you can help me preach my sermon. Let's, let's go and get over your looks so you can help me preach today. I said, when the opportunity presents itself, think back, go back, give back, and help lift somebody else up. We can keep his legacy alive by living the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And to paraphrase Dr. Maya Angelou's quote, people may not remember everything you said, but they will remember how you made them feel. And I'm here to declare, B.B. King made us feel special and important, included, and extraordinary, and that is why we honor him on this day. Yes. We can keep his legacy alive by using our gifts and our talents to make this world a better place. For B.B., it was his music. And we can keep his legacy alive by loving folks and forgiving them. Forgive others and forgive yourself. B.B. King never harbored bitterness. Life on the plantation could have crippled his life and destiny, but he never harbored bitterness. The plantation was not a crutch, but a stepping stone to greatness. And so he taught us he taught us by example, you cannot lie down on pillows of peace and rest on cushions of comfort under the cover of night if you let the sun go down on your wrath. Just forgive folks and love them like Jesus. So we say thank you to our beloved BB for teaching and demonstrating important lessons of life. You taught us we can overcome adversity. Thank you and welcome home. You put Indianola on the map. We are no longer a speck on a speck in a huge galaxy. Somebody know we are down here. Thank you and welcome home. And you reminded these United States that good folks with good values, with good virtues, with good manners, and good hospitality do indeed come from the state of Mississippi. Thank you and welcome home. You reminded the world of this biblical principle the first will be last, and the last will be first. Thank you, and welcome home. Now we have, we have in Indianola the exclusive privilege of welcoming BB home. Only folks who call Indianola home can do so. However, there is one opportunity we all share, and it is the privilege of welcoming Jesus, King of Kings, home in our hearts. It doesn't matter if you're from Paris, Tennessee, or Paris, France. It doesn't matter if you're from Macon, Mississippi, or Macon, Georgia. It doesn't matter if you're from Cambridge, New York, or Cambridge, England. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're from Sydney, Canada, yeah. or Sydney, Australia. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're from Beverly Hills, Texas, 
of Beverly Hill, California, all of us can welcome Jesus, the King of Kings, home in our hearts. chapter verse 16 we find these words of encouragement for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life I want to tell you, whether you know it or not, God loves you. It is not based on your last name. It is not based on the amount of money in your bank account. It is not based on the wealth you've amassed or the number of degrees lining your wall. It is not based on prominence or popularity. God loves you because God is love. But you say, does God love me in all the mess I've been in? Yes. But you don't know about my dark past. Yes. But you don't know some of the things I have done. Yes. But you don't know what I've been through, Reverend. I, I know I'm dressed up and looking good, but deep down on the inside, I'm torn from the floor, but the answer is yes, God loves you. And not only does God love you, but he wants to grant you eternal life. He wants you to experience peace with him. Yeah. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says, We have peace with God right. through our Lord Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I want to declare this evening that, that God calls you to a relationship with him. Yeah. Imagine the God of the universe, yeah. the God who stepped out on space and said let it be and it was the one who formed the stars and dazzled the clouds the one who shaped the moon into a perfect circle the one who dotted the hills with trees and carpeted the earth with grass the one who set the boundaries for the ocean and the streams the one who knelt by the sea of time and found dust and packed neck bone with shoulder bone, shoulder bone with backbone, backbone with hip bone, hip bone with knee bone, knee bone with toe bone and ran back and blew into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. This God wants a relationship with you. relationship with God why are there so many people who have missed God's purpose for their lives and and why aren't there more people walking with God and fulfilling his purpose in their lives and fulfilling his destiny is because of one problem and it's spelled S-I-N and the whole human race is guilty. Don't let the robe fool you. I was born in sin. Don't let the seats in the choir fool you. They haven't always been Christian. They were born in sin. And everybody in here was born in sin. Sin is anything we do that results in disobeying God or going a separate direction from God. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned. Yeah. Did you all hear that? Yeah. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Yeah. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, the wages of sin is death and separation from God. Yeah. Sin won't let us follow God. Sin won't let me obey God. Sin separates me from God. And so you ask, what's the remedy? What's the solution? Reverend, you can't send me home condemned and discouraged. What's the remedy? Jesus Christ is God's answer to sin problems. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Let me burst your bubble. Nobody in America or on the planet earth can take credit for their salvation. Jesus paid the price. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, there is no other name under heaven given whereby men can be saved. There is no other name that can restore your relationship and my relationship with God. Only the name of Jesus saves. God sent him to pay our sin debt in full. And there on the cross, Jesus took all of my sins. And Jesus bore all of your sins. And Jesus bore the sins of the whole world there on an old rugged cross. But the Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes, we are healed. Christ paid the penalty for the sins of the world. And now you ask me, what's next? From the cross to the grave. But death is not the end. Death is not the end. Death is not the end. On the third day, he rolls with all power in his hand. Power to save you. Power to transform you. Power to convert you. Power to uplift you. Power to change your life. He rolls with all power. And so, what do I do? Do like you do when you take a flight. You get on board. Jesus said, I'm standing at your door and I'm knocking. And if you open up, I'll come live inside you and I will transform your nature. I will change your life. I will convert you save you and sign your name on the Lamb's book of life. Your walk will never be the same. Your talk will never be the same. Your attitude will never be the same. And your future will never be the same. So wherever you are today, and I'm closing, you say, what do I do? You simply turn to Jesus. And say, Lord, I admit Yes, sir. I haven't been going in the right direction. Uh -huh. I admit I haven't obeyed you, God. Yeah. And I want to turn from my sins. I had to do it. I want to repent and head in the direction of Jesus. And I want to ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and save me. And I'm here to declare wherever these cameras send this song, Jesus saves. I'm here to declare wherever this video goes, Christ is the answer.
So if you invite Jesus into your heart, Come on. Yeah. you ask me the question, what do you have? Yeah. Dr. E.B. Hill said, when you have Jesus, yeah. you have peace with God. Yeah. You're no longer an enemy, but you are a child and adopted in the family of God. Yeah. And when God adopts you, yes, sir. he signs your name on the Lamb Book of Life. Yeah. Yes, when he adopts you, your salvation is secure. Yeah. Heaven is real and your destination is secure. Yeah. You'll discover your purpose in Jesus. Yeah. You'll discover his power in Jesus. Yeah. You'll find your place in Jesus. Yeah. And second of all, you have the peace oh, of God. Oh, yeah. Yes, many of you know, and I'm going to soon go, four and a half years ago, yeah. In fact, it's six and a half years now. My kidney fell and I was on dialysis four and a half years. Nine hours a night, every night of the week. Sometimes I wondered how things would turn out. But I want to tell you, if you trust in Jesus, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Yes, if you lean on Jesus, He'll make everything all right. And I'm here to tell you the Lord spared my life. I ain't trying to be so dirty up in here. Jesus spared my life. Over a year ago, I had a stroke. Woke up one morning paralyzed. Couldn't even write nor walk. Couldn't even lift my left arm. But I called on Jesus. And I just want to show you what the Lord will do if you call on his name. I couldn't lift my arm, but look at what Jesus did. If I can't say a word, I'll just wave. But above all, the Lord saved me. And so today we welcome the king of the blues home. But I want to tell you the king of kings want to make his home in your heart. Yeah. And if you invite him in, yeah. the thrill will be yours of spending eternity in his home. Yeah. Yes, the king is coming. And I'm about to go. I'm about to land the plane. And I advise you to put on your seatbelts and cut off your headgear. And if you see this Leaning back, you need to ride up. Because I'm about to land the plane. We may experience a little turbulence, but I'm going to land the plane. I want to tell you, the king is coming. One day, when the clouds roll back like a scroll, the king is coming. One day, when the dust settles, when armies can't march no more, the king is coming. When dignitaries and potentates can't rule no more, the king is coming. One day, we don't know the day nor the hour, but one day, the king is coming. And if I were you, I would invite him in and make him my choice. I leave you with what scripture says. Jesus yeah. is Alpha, yeah. and he's Omega. Yeah. That means he's everything yeah. from A to Z. Yeah. He's A. Yeah. He's an anchor in the time of storm. Yeah. He's B. Yeah. He's a battle axe. Yeah. He's C. Yeah. He cares for us all. Yeah. He's D. Yeah. He's my deliverer. Yeah. He's E. Yeah. He's everlasting. Yeah. He's F. Yeah. He's been my friend. Yeah. He's G. Yeah. He'll go with you to the end. Yeah. He's H. Yeah. He's my healer. Yeah. He's I. Yeah. He's irresistible. Yeah. He's J. Yeah. Just who he say he is. Yeah. He's K. Yeah. Kind and true. Yeah. He's L. Yeah. He loves all of us too. Yeah. He's M. He's my provider. Yes, He's in. Yeah. He'll never forsake y'all. Yeah. He's old. Yeah. He's omnipotent. Yeah. And he's P. Yeah. 
the Prince of Peace. Yes. Some of y'all looking at me strange, but I was promoted from the first grade to the second. I know my ABC. He's Q. He'll satisfy your quest. He's R. He's ready when y'all are. He's S. He'll save you. He, he's T. He's there when you need it. He's U. Jesus is unlimited. He's V. He's victorious. He's W. He's a warrior. He's X. Extra good. Woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. Gave me eyes to see, a voice to talk, ears to hear, legs to walk. Save me and sign my name on the Lamb Book of Life. He's extra good. He's Y. Yes, it's true. And he's Z, the King of Zion. My God. BB's God. My God. Matthew's God. My God. Benny Thompson's God. My God. Indianola's God. Somebody say like Coke, he's a real thing. He's like MasterCard, don't leave home without it. He's like the old half spray, he'll hold up in all kind of weather. He's like Scott State, you can't see him, but you know he's there. He's like Maxwell Coffee, he's good to the last drop. He's like M&M's, he's good. The king is coming, and he wants to make his home in your heart. Invite Jesus, the King of Kings, to come home in your heart. God bless you. We love you. And funeral directors may come at this time. time scheduling we are ahead of schedule therefore we will be favored with some great singing and a tribute Miss Denise LaSalle will do a tribute to uh, Mr. Riley B. B. King Reverend Otis Clay will sing as well as Mr. Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Mr. Sale, you may come forward at this time, followed by Reverend Otis Clay, and lastly, Mr. Stevie Wonder. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I, I don't want to say it's a pleasure, but I'd like to say it is indeed an honor to be asked to come forward and speak a word in honor of the great B.B. King. I would like to say that we've done many, many, many shows together, and on the road with B.B. was just like, just like heaven, almost. <laughs> What you imagine, he is one, he was one of the most nicest men out there on the road. And he's, he's just been great to know and to work with. And I'd like to say we're going to miss him so much, him and Lucille. We will, he will be missed by all of us out there on the road. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you. 
to the family. We are here today to celebrate. This is the last thing I'll do for B.B. King. But I think of all the years that I've known him, that he inspired me just in his mere presence. And for those that knew him, know what I'm talking about. We want to do this today. To the poor pit. But I'm traveling with a friend of mine, Mr. Willie Rogers of the Soul Stir. This song was recorded also by the Soul Stirs, and it was led by Johnny Taylor. Through the years, I keep on. Cheat my 
One of the great songs, Key of A, he said these words. Yeah. 
beyond the sky. It's been a long, 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 recognize Mrs. Mary Shepard. She is former owner of Club Ebony here in Indianola. Ms. Shepard, would you please stand at this time? Also, I would like to recognize Mr. Charles Evers one of B.B. King's very dear friend. Mr. Evers, would you please stand at this time? Thank you, Stevie. You may come at this time. Stevie will play uh, a tribute to Mr. Riley B. B. King. Yes. Hi, young Mr. Stevie calling you from LA. Yeah. I heard you talk to Stephanie. She told you that we really tried to come to be there because obviously I knew BB King since I was a little boy. Since I was 13 or 14 years old, we did the Henry Wynn tour together. So I really wanted to be there. And um, it just flight wise, it couldn't happen based on the time that you know we got started with this whole deal. But please let his family know that um, you know I love him, love him, and will always. And um, he will forever be the king of the blues. But not just that, one of the kings of just a wonderful spirit as he as he had. And, um, I will always share him saying, hey Stephen Wonder is as he would always say, Hey, Stevie Wonderous! My little girl laughing in the background. But um, anyway, I just, um, I give uh, the family all my love and respect. And, uh, you know, as uh, when I asked God, why did he take my mother? Uh, I loved her so much. And God said to me in spirit, as much as you may have loved her and needed her, I loved and needed her more. And that's why I feel God is saying to the family is to, to be the king. Uh, look forward to meeting you someday. God bless you. That was just a tribute. He, uh, of course, is not here in person, and we will not be favored with songs by Stevie. Thank you.
filled with despair. Remember, God cares. directors, you may come forward at this time.
been watching a live broadcast of the funeral for 89-year-old Riley B.B. King, celebrating his life and legacy in Indianola, Mississippi at Bulb Grove Baptist Church. Thank you for watching Mississippi Public Broadcasting.